4.6 gigahertz, all core, 1.4 volts, 90 degrees centigrade. Hello Scatterventures and welcome to a brand new episode. In this episode we will overclock the Ryzen 7 3800 XT up to 4.6 gigahertz using custom loop water cooling. The 3800 XT slots in right below the Ryzen 9 3900 XT and right on top of the Ryzen 5 3600 XT. Matisse XT is the refresh of the original Matisse architecture launched last year. The new processors have the same architecture and the same 7 nanometer process node as its predecessors. AMD claims it has made significant progress on yields and that's why faster products can come to market. The Matisse XT features high clock speeds, enhanced overclocking support and more tightly tuned boost algorithms. The Ryzen 7 3800 XT offers 8 cores and 16 threads with a base frequency of 3.9 GHz and a boost frequency of 4.7 GHz. The TDP is 105 watts and the MSRP is just below $400. In this video we will cover the basic overclocking step needed to get your CPU all the way to 4.6 GHz using custom loop water cooling. We will dig into three overclocking scenarios. First, we'll overclock the CPU to its maximum stable Prime95 settings. Second, we'll push the CPU further to its all core stable maximum frequency. Lastly, we look into individual CCX overclocking. Along with the AMD Ryzen 7 3800 XT processor, in this guide, we will be using the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Impact Motherboard, an ROG Strix RTX 2080 Ti, a pair of G-Skill Trident Z Royal DDR4 3200 memory sticks, and of course, EK water cooling. All this is mounted on top of our favorite open bench table. The cost of the components should be about $3,100. That's $400 for the CPU, cooling $600, motherboard $430, bench table $200, memory $160, and the graphics card $1,300. Before we get started, let's talk about some of the overclocking constraints we will be facing. A Ryzen 3000 CPU consists of a couple of parts. Each CPU has multiple chiplets. A chiplet is a die with specific functions such as a CPU core, I.O. hub, memory controller, and so on. All the chiplets on the CPU communicate with each other via the Infinity Fabric Interconnect. A core chiplet die, or CCD, is one of the chips on the AMD CPU. A CCD consists of two CCXs paired together. CCX is short for Core Complex. The Core Complex consists of four individual cores, each with their L1 and L2 cache. They also share a larger L3 cache. The Ryzen 7 3800 XT has one CCD with two CCXs, and each CCX has all four cores enabled. Adding everything up, that means two times four, so eight cores. AMD's default configuration offers aggressive clock frequency of individual cores based on the temperature and power consumption headroom, as well as the individual core quality. While AMD offers aggressive frequency boost for single-threaded applications, it does not offer to set the single threaded boost frequency when manually overclocking. This means that if you overclock manually, you will lose the single thread frequency advantage. Also, AMD does not offer an AVX offset that can reduce the operating frequency when, for example, running Prime95. Lastly, by default, the Infinity Fabric, Memory Controller and Memory Frequency operate in synchronous mode. That means, typically, the CPU will run all frequencies in one-to-one -one ratio. Synchronous mode works up to 1800 MHz, after which the system switches to asynchronous mode. In asynchronous mode, the memory controller will operate at half the frequency of the system memory. The fabric clock will also run below the system memory frequency. So you will have a performance penalty. This penalty can be overcome by increasing the memory frequency to well over DDR4-4000 speeds. With all this in mind, let's dig into the benchmarks and overclocking. Here's a list of benchmarks used in this guide. SuperPi 4M, Geekbench 5, HWX265, Cinebench R20, ROG Realbench version 2.56, Final Fantasy 14. Before we get started with pushing the performance of the AMD Ryzen 7 3800 XT processor, let's first take a look at the scoring at stock settings. SuperPi 4M, 42.843 seconds. Geekbench 5 Single, 
1,354 points. Geekbench 5 Multi, 8,557 points. HW X365 4K, 15.749 frames per second. Cinebench R20, 5,173 marks. ROG Realbench, 190,383. Final Fantasy XIV, 148.86 frames per second. As a first step, we will overclock the CPU frequency to 4.4 GHz with 1.35 V and a level 2 load line. We leave any of the other settings untouched. We re-ran the benchmarks and check the performance increase compared to default operation. We can already see that by manually overclocking, we are giving up the strong single thread boost frequency. In single thread benchmarks, we even lose performance compared to default, while in the multi-threaded applications, we gain performance. Let's dial in the other frequencies. In addition to overclocking the CPU frequency to 4.4 GHz, we also overclock the fabric and memory controller to 1.8 GHz. We also manually increase the memory frequency to DDR4-3600 and set the memory timings. This is also the highest Prime95 small FFT with AVX stable configuration. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. We can clearly see the positive impact of increasing the fabric and memory frequency. Some single-threaded benchmark applications are still in deficit compared to stock, but especially multi-threaded benchmark applications are benefiting nicely. Running Prime95 small FFT with AVX at 4.4 GHz, we're seeing peak CPU temperature of 90 degrees centigrade and an average CPU package power of 153 Watt. Let's look at Pulse Prime95 overclocking capabilities. If we ignore Prime95, we can further increase the CPU frequency to 4.6 GHz while maintaining the same fabric and memory clock frequencies. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. As expected, the performance continues to rise. Similar to what we witnessed when overclocking the 3900 XT, at 4.6 GHz, the single-threaded performance is catching up and even surpassing that of default operations. Remember, the maximum boost frequency for single-thread applications is 4.7 GHz at default. And again, the explanation is very similar that 4.7 GHz is a best case scenario. And to get the best case scenario, you need great cooling, but also great cores. And not all of the eight cores of the 3800 XT boost to 4.7 GHz. We see a couple of them hit 4.7 and even a little bit above that, but some hit only 4.6 or even 4.55. So on average, with all cores at 4.6 GHz, we're pretty much there. If you want to find out which core boosts to what frequency, I highly recommend you to use Hardware Info's Effective Clock Measurement. You can learn more about this measurement from the Elmore Labs blog article. The last step in our overclocking adventure is to increase the frequency of the individual CCX. For this Ryzen 7 3800 XT, we found that CCX2 was able to run at half a ratio higher than the others, so 4.65 GHz. We re-ran the benchmarks and checked the performance increase compared to default operation. The performance increase ranges from 1% all the way up to 13.5%. Alright, let's wrap this video up. My feeling when overclocking the 3800 XT is very similar to that of the 3900 XT. That is, AMD users don't have that much overclocking strategies to choose from, but overclocking trade-offs to choose from. But remember, not in a bad way. Compared to the 3900 XT, the out-of-the-box performance boost frequencies of the 3800 XT are very impressive. I regularly saw the CPU hit the advertised boost frequency of 4.7 GHz. In fact, sometimes even a tad higher. Reiterating what I said in the previous video, the AMD engineers who were tasked with getting the users the best possible performance at default settings did an amazing job. But those great out-of-the-box boost frequencies come at a cost. When manually overclocking, you lose the benefits of automatic boost frequency. This is the first overclocking trade-off. Settle for a lower single-threaded performance with higher all-core performance or the other way around. 
Another overclocking trade-off is that there's no way to configure the system for truly worst case scenarios, such as Prime95, small FFT with AVX. On other platforms, you can use an AVX offset ratio to temporarily reduce the performance if such workloads come your way. But on AMD, you can't. That means that you have to decide whether you're willing to trade in potentially less stable configuration, but more performance. In an ideal scenario, here's how this Ryzen 7 3800 XT would likely be able to overclock. Single thread workloads, 4.8 GHz, all core non-AVX workloads, 4.6 GHz, all core very heavy AVX workloads, 4.4 GHz. So if you stick to an absolute worst case scenario, you'll have to settle for a 400 megahertz deficit in single threaded workloads. All right, that's it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. If you learned something new or you liked the video, you know what to do. Until the next time.